Doug Padgett, the, more than 80 percent of voters in 2016 voted for President Trump. In addition to the border and immigration issue you just spoke about, what do you think has changed uh, in that group uh, that would have them vote Democratic in, in uh, 2018? Well, we are quite heartened by the 20 percent who didn't. And, um, you know, you, Bill, you brought up this great statistic that came from the Religious News Service that one of the things they found was that people who self-identify as evangelical, 80 percent of those people voted for Trump. But when you ask the question that if you attended a regular church service, the more often evangelicals attended church services or were actually engaged in communities of faith, the number of the, the percentage of support for Donald Trump goes down dramatically. Now, I'm heartened by that, that in fact, people who are in Christian communities where they're meeting in church services or in groups, they're not supporting Trump at the same level. But there's a lot of people who say that they're evangelical or religiously motivated, and very often those people support Donald Trump at a higher level. So I think there's something going on where the self-identification of people who are claiming a Christian narrative supports Donald Trump higher than those whose practice of attending church uh, do. So we're, we're hopeful that if people are in Christian communities, if they're listening to one another, if they're engaging with one another in both issues of faith and issues of civic life, that they're beginning to see that you can have a Christian faith. In fact, your Christian faith calls you and demands that you can for the least of these in this country and that you can't simply go on supporting the Trump administration and a Republican Congress. And we want to be clear. We're traveling with Republicans, we're traveling with independents, we're traveling with people who don't vote regularly. What's brought all of us together is that we see that this presidency needs to be restrained and the founders anticipated a presidency like this and the remedy for it was a Congress that would stand up to this presidency and that's what we have a chance to do. This is democracy in action. This is us utilizing the system of voting and representation to bring about the kinds of restraints that we think there needs to be on a dangerous and reckless Trump administration. You mentioned the Vote Common Good tour on its way to Texas, a story from the New York Times reporting on that Senate race there with Beto O'Rourke challenging Ted Cruz. The headline, Beto O'Rourke may benefit from an unlikely support group, white evangelical women. They write that... After, recent ch after church on a recent Sunday, Emily Mooney smiled as she told her girlfriends about her public act of rebellion. She had slapped a Beto for Senate sticker on her SUV and driven it to her family's evangelical church. But then across the parking lot, deep in conservative, conservative Bible Belt, Texas, she spotted a sign of support. The same exact sticker endorsing Beto O'Rourke, the Democrat, who is challenging Ted Cruz. What are you hearing about not just that race, but the, the role of evangelical women in, uh, in some of these tighter races? Well, as people who've been a part of evangelical churches have known for years, women are always the driving force and the primary leaders in these churches. Even when churches don't seem to recognize their leadership, women have been the leaders of these churches. And many Republican women are so newly enraged about what's going on with the Trump administration and this complicit Congress that they are willing to change their long-held political party affiliations to do something about it. This is really a crisis of faith for many people, and the leadership is primarily coming from evangelical women who are saying, this has to stop. The behavior of the Trump administration, the constant lies, it's very hard for these women to, uh, to go to their church and hear the idea that the truth will set you free while the Trump administration is lying and deceiving and exaggerating at the level that they are. So evangelical women are the voting block that we think is going to make the difference, not only in that Senate race in Texas, but all across the country in these congressional races. And we want to remind our viewers that we will be covering that Texas Senate debate between Ted Cruz